In tonight's video, I'm going to photograph the beautiful pinwheel galaxy in the constellation Ursa Major using a one-shot color camera and a telescope. This is a face-on spiral galaxy that lies 21 million light years away. I've captured this amazing target several times before, but I think taking a strategic approach to this project tonight, this is going to be my best version yet. Through years of deep sky astrophotography trial and error, I've learned a few not so obvious strategies that you can try yourself. You'll notice that I'm using a compact wide field refractor for this imaging session, which is less than ideal because we're in galaxy season right now and most galaxies are really, really small. However, there's a few reasons why this particular configuration is great for the pinwheel galaxy. When it comes to choosing an appropriate target for your particular camera and telescope configuration, you need to consider image scale. The other thing you need to remember, oh my goodness, I'm late for a call. Hold on a second. Can you guys hear anything? Yeah, We're good now, I got it. Hey, excellent. I know how to use a phone. Those are, that's my cool lighting, my cool uh, YouTuber lighting. <laughs> Does it look cool? Well, hopefully you were able to catch that Dylan O'Donnell put on a live stream with uh, myself, Chuck's Astrophotography and Galactic Hunter, and of course Dylan, and uh, it was a lot of fun. It was, I've actually never talked, you know, in person or, you know, in a Zoom meeting with uh, Chuck and Antoine and Dahlia. So that was really cool to do that. The sun has set now. It's uh, it's getting pretty chilly out here. It's funny because uh, Chuck was also setting up because he's not too far from me in Detroit. And uh, he said it's clear as well. I just need to pull her line. So that's the stage I'm at now. But I wanted to talk about, uh, you know, shooting in galaxy season with a refractor telescope like this. Obviously wide field, as I said, isn't the greatest choice for small galaxies, but this imaging system is actually really great. So the sensor on the ZWO ASI 533MC Pro is rather small and the image scale that it creates through this telescope actually is a pretty narrow field of view. I've widened it up a little bit with the Star Arizona 0.65 Apex ED reducer and that's an even better field of view in this case for this target. So Messier 101 is actually quite a large galaxy as far as galaxies go and I think you should try it even if you have a compact refractor telescope, wide field scope, you can still get M101. I, I actually started shooting it with an 80 millimeter refractor at like 480, I think the focal length was. It's still pretty gratifying even at that focal length. So that's the plan tonight. And because we have a pretty bright moon out, it looks, well, it's way past first quarter. I think it's probably 70%. Uh, because we have that bright moon out, I am shooting in broadband. The M101 Galaxy is on the other side of the sky than the moon, so hopefully it doesn't interfere too much. But lastly, I'm going to be shooting shorter exposures, so 120 seconds each, just because in this case, I'm building the image up from existing data I have. Tonight, I just want to capture some natural looking star colors. I'll blend in some galaxy data I captured on a previous night when the moon wasn't so bright. So building these projects one step at a time and focusing on different elements of the image. In this case, as I said, just capturing natural star colors. It's a smart way to approach a deep sky project. It is quiet out here. You could hear a pin drop. this bad boy and get set up for the night. Uh, M101 clears my house and I should be able to image it for the next four hours. It's not all the time that I get to image a target for that long in the backyard. If you didn't see my last video, I installed a custom landscape in Stellarium, the planetarium software I use. Man, that is so handy. I see the obstructions that I deal with my neighbor's house and the trees and everything so I can see exactly when deep sky targets are available to me or not. The way you do it, you create a panoramic image, you know, hold your phone, take a panoramic image, and then uh, just put it in the right folder in Stellarium, basically remove the sky, 
and what do you know, you have a custom landscape. Very cool, that is a game changer. You know when you follow a YouTube channel and uh, every once in a while they just drop a really great tip and you're like, this is why I subscribe to this channel. So I wanna do more of those. Uh, two, I have two for you right now. One, are you seeing this lens and, and how it looks out here right now? This Sigma 24 millimeter F1.4 is an affordable wide angle lens that's great for filming in low light situations. This is something I didn't have before, so uh, I'm pretty smitten with this lens right now. Obviously I have no connections to Sigma or anything, but so there's one tip if you're a YouTuber and you're filming outside. Another one for astrophotographers specifically, if a team viewer is giving you trouble and you're trying to remote into your imaging laptop outside like I am, uh, try AnyDesk. It's another free software that allows you to remote in and AnyDesk has been a lot more reliable than uh, TeamViewer that kicked me off for saying that I used it for commercial purposes. So AnyDesk, try it out. I did a review video of the QHY Polemaster a uh, few, well about a, one year ago exactly almost. And uh, it really is a game changer. I just love using it for polar alignment. Not only does it get me more accurate polar alignment, even though I felt like I was pretty good at it, it's just so enjoyable to know and confirm that you're polar aligned. It's worth the money just for that fact alone. So it involves you, you know, double clicking Polaris, aligning some, you know, surrounding stars, which is oddly satisfying. And now I'm actually gonna physically move the mount, not the telescope, the adjustment bolts to uh, align Polaris in the crosshairs there. Getting close, side to side. Now we need to go up. There we go, and then uh, it's fine tuning from here. It's just uh, a real pleasure to use. I can't say enough about the, the Pole Master. You know, it's funny to hear the things that uh, people give me a hard time about in the comments on YouTube. And uh, one of the ones I get all the time is, uh, they say, why the heck are you using a hand controller? And to the beginners watching this channel, you might say, what's wrong with using a hand controller? And to them I say, nothing. Okay, okay, plate solving has a lot of advantages. But seriously, I'm doing a one star alignment and then I'm all good to go. That's Arcturus up there, by the way. I'm gonna choose the star Alcade, which is in the handle of the Big Dipper because the pinwheel galaxy is right next to it. So when I slew to that target, it's gonna be dead center. You plate solving guys don't even get to press these big orange buttons. It's so satisfying. You know what, here's another tip that uh, I want all of you to hear, especially the beginners. Do not rush your setup process. I understand there's an urgency because you know the stars are moving, there's limited time to capture your target. Clouds may be on the way, so you feel rushed and want to get up and running as quick as possible. But the next day when you're looking at your data and it's a little out of focus or your target isn't framed just right, it will drive you crazy and sometimes it's the data's unusable. So what was the point of rushing for unusable data? You're always better off slowing down, doing things right and getting less data that's great. Well, that's pretty cool. You can still see how close Venus is to the Pleiades. It's traveling through it. Friday was, uh, it was right inside of it, right next to Alcyone. And uh, I saw so many great pictures online of the event. And uh, there were so many great comments on my videos. It was neat to do that. It's uh, pretty cool when, you know, the everyday public takes an interest in astronomy and starts paying attention to what we're doing. And uh, it's events like these that have the power to do that, so. I really love it. I didn't even check if there's any ISS passes tonight. There it is. Drifting away from the Pleiades. Look at that beautiful moon. I, you know what, these days I rarely look at the moon through a telescope and I really miss it. What you're seeing right now is using my filming camera, the 6D Mark II with the Canon 400 millimeter f5.6 lens. And uh, it's a pretty cool focal length for the moon. You get some nice detail in there. Really beautiful. You probably can't tell from here, but it's slowly moving out of the frame. 
Well, it's midnight now and uh, it's got a lot colder out here. Frosty night. It's very, very bright. As you can see, I'm like totally lit up by that 94% illuminated full moon. And if you forgot about how light polluted this backyard is, have a look behind me at all the lights that are uh, glowing around me. So it's gonna be a bit of work to produce a nice image out of the data collected tonight, but I think using the Optolong L Pro was the right choice. You know, shooting in broadband RGB on a moonlit night is uh, never the smartest idea, but those shorter exposures, and as long as I don't try to push the data too far and focus on using these images collected tonight and use my existing RGB data captured on a moonless night to combine the two, and I really think that uh, I'll be able to come up with a decent picture of the Pinwheel Galaxy. So thanks again for coming along for another night of deep sky astrophotography with me, and until next time, clear skies.